This video is picking up right where the previous video left off in the part 070 loops document. So we're back into uh, MATLAB, not Octave, but we're just going to continue right on down. This video is going to be a little bit of a mixed bag. I'm going to talk about the XOR function, which I mentioned in a previous video, but didn't delve that deeply into. I'm also going to talk a little bit more about fprintf and how to use it to properly print out a table. That was also covered in an earlier video, but I know that some of my students struggle to do that when I ask them to do it on homework. So um, there's just going to be a, a variety pack in this relatively short video. All of this code will work in Octave exactly as it works here. However, the use of the single vertical bar or pipe symbol for OR, where a double vertical bar is actually more appropriate, will throw a warning in Octave where it doesn't throw a warning in MATLAB. Although it does, like if I hover over it, give a warning right here saying that I should probably be using a double vertical bar for performance. So it's slightly more efficient if I use a double vertical bar. I tell my students to just use the single vertical bar because it works with vectors and it works with scalars, which is not true of the double vertical bar. So this is just like the more general solution. And that's why I choose to use it and just put up with the warning. Okay, so let's run this section of code and then talk about it. There's not that much output. Basically, it's just determining which of these displays gets executed. So X is three and Y is six. If X is greater than one, that's true because three is greater than one. Or Y is equal to six. That's also true. Okay, great. So it displays or resulted in true. The or operator right here resulted in true when these were the two inputs to the or. Compare that with XOR. XOR parentheses, already the syntax is different. X greater than one, that's true. Y equals equals six, that's true. This overall results in false. And we do not run this code. Instead, we run this code down here and you can see it displays out false. Why is that? Well, because the X in XOR stands for exclusive. Exclusive OR wants one thing or the other to be true, but not both. Whereas the OR up here just wants one thing or the other to be true, or both of them, it doesn't care. So this is a little bit more flexible than XOR. And in practice, I find that we're using this much more often than XOR, but you know, your results may vary. The other thing that I wanna emphasize is the syntax difference. I kind of wish we could do XOR like we do the vertical bar, by just like typing in the word XOR right here, but unfortunately that is simply not how it is implemented. XOR is a function. We call a function by using its name, followed by parentheses, and we pass to that function any information we want to give it by putting that information inside the parentheses of the function separated by commas. So in order to perform an XOR of these two true-false values up here, we need to put it in the parentheses just like this. Continuing on down, if I do a slightly different comparison, I still have the same variables and I'm checking x greater than one, that's still true. But instead of saying, does y equal six or not? I say, does y equal 77 or not? Well, that's false, but that's just perfect for an XOR. And the result is that this is executed. It results in true here because this is false. XOR wants exactly one of its inputs to be true, but not both of them. And that's all I wanted to say about XOR. I'm going to continue on down to give a review of fprintf and how to use fprintf to display data out nicely in a column format, in a, like a table format using columns. If you feel good about this, you can skip this. All right, so I run this section of code, and by the way, this is the wrong way to do it. Let me resize my window. So the matrix of values, when I display it out, looks totally fine. And by the way, it's times from 1 to 10, and then a vector that I've named temperatures uh, that has a minimum of 80, and then I add to that a random value between 0 and 20, 10 random values in one row and 10 columns. And when I transpose both of these horizontal vectors into column vectors, vertical vectors, and pop them into a variable that I've named matrix right here, and display it out, that works great. It looks totally fine. It looks like this. There's all my times in column one, and there's all my temperatures in column two. But then when I use fprintf to try and display out that matrix, I mean, the first row works fine. I'm just displaying time and temperature and then using backslash n to go down to the next line. 
But then when I use these placeholders, percent %3D, to say an integer that is going to be three spaces wide, and we'll put the extra spaces on the left, and also a floating point value, a decimal placed value, that's going to be eight total spaces wide with one decimal place, and so it is basically filling up that space right there, this doesn't end up good. At first it maybe looks okay, except the temperatures seem pretty low, but then down here everything's just a mess. So what happened? Well, if you think about this and look carefully, you'll see these are all the times. It's 1 through 10. And then these are all the temperatures. Well, that's not what we wanted. And the reason why this happens is pretty much all the MATLAB functions operate on a per column basis. They read down the columns. So when we're substituting values into these placeholders, the first values that get substituted in when the matrix is oriented like this is the 1 and then the 2. But they get placed side by side when being printed out. It's kind of like they are being transposed, because we read down the column, but we display them horizontally. That's essentially what a transpose is. So, a really easy way to fix it is actually to just go ahead and transpose the matrix. So I stick a transpose in there, resize and rerun. Oh, but I always misspell transpose for some reason. Okay, let's try that again. All right, there's the matrix. It looks great. And there's the output of fprintf, and it also looks great. So that's one way to do it, but there are literally three transposes that are used. Another way to do it is to simply don't put your vectors in columns, put them in rows. This is a semicolon here. This is equivalent to this. First row is times, second row is temperatures, no transposes needed, the original fprintf that we had before. And if I run this, it displays out that same table, and you can just compare. It's literally the exact same thing. So that fixes our problem. And then I think I have example code here. Yeah, so this was the three transposes that I already demonstrated, right? You can just use those three transposes there. Although another thing I like to note on this section is I kind of like to use placeholders even for the text, even for those column headers. So here I'm saying percent %8s for string, Time is going to be eight spaces wide when it gets substituted into this placeholder. Temperature is going to be 12 spaces wide. I like using the numeric values. I think that gives you more control than just like hammering the space bar as many times as you think you need. And in fact, I shouldn't have used two spaces there. If I want it to be however many spaces it was, like that's how it would look. Now you could just use display. Uh, that would work the same. Let me actually run this section. All right, so there's our, there's our uh, table right there. It looks great. You could just use display. That will also work. And there's your results right there. You didn't get the same spacing because, I mean, you got to, like, hit the space bar to figure out where the time needs to be. There it is. But one easy mistake to make, it's very minor, but it's something you want to avoid, is doing fprintf like this. Can you spot the difference? And at first it might look okay, but if we widen our screen, uh-oh, our first row of the table is over here. All we forgot was a backslash n. We forgot to put a backslash n right there. Notice I had the backslash n here. You don't need it for display. Display automatically adds a new line after the text that it displays out, which is why I think often people forget to add it into the fprintf. But that backslash n is really important. What if I remove the backslash n from here? How does that look? Uh, hint, it's going to look really bad. It displays all of my table data just horizontally. And I guess I could scroll over and look at it, but it's kind of a mess. So that's an easy mistake to make, and it's an easy mistake to fix. And that wraps us up for this video. I believe in the next video, uh, well, we're going to do the exercises for this section, and then we're going to be moving on to some matrix algebra.